good morning. I'm not in my usual digs at the prayer chapel at Holy Cross this morning because I have a morning appointment that won't allow me to be there. So I'm recording my morning prayer from here in my home office. Um, obviously you can see there's music stuff over here. You can't see there's some bookshelves off the side. Lots of junk here. This is, this is where I do my work at home. But this is my home altar. And I wanted to show you how you could set up a home altar. Um, most of what I, you see before you is stuff that has some personal significance to me. These bells came from my grandfather's house. and um, I've got a, uh, a wonderful medal here from a pub. I, I serve on the board of a publicity bureau. This, is a, this was done for the Reformation a couple years ago for 500th anniversary of the Reformation. It's a coin. One of our leaders is into numismatics. And I don't know if you can read it there, but it says, what would Luther do today? Um, so, and what I think is kind of fun because you can see that Luther's doing a bunch of stuff there. Um, in addition to the printing press behind him, you see him working at his scripture. He's got his Stein of beer in the front, but then uh, to his, his, his left, your right, you see that he's blogging on the computer. So, um, a good reminder to us that we have responsibilities today as Christians that our predecessors couldn't have. Um, the icon and lots of the other icons, which you may not be able to see off camera, come from my sister-in-law, uh, my late sister-in-law. Her roommate from grad school is now a professor in Athens, Greece, and so uh, she sent her these and she, she gave them to me over the years as presents. This crucifix here came from a very, very uh, poor African-American church. It was their gift to me after we did some work together. Um, this is a wonderful re recreation of a sculpture in Florence. We have the Ten Commandments, we have Psalm 23. Um, things that are just personally important to me. Things like my favorite poem is here, The Hound of Heaven. It's just under the edge of the Bible there. Um, you could do this yourself at home. Set up a corner that reminds you to pray and then pray there a lot. Um, it will help you. Uh, in my ritual, when I light my candle up top there in front of Psalm 23, it's time to begin my prayers. Um, and to remind you, you can lead prayer at home. I use the structure of morning prayer, whether I'm at church or not. Um, but often when I'm at home alone, I'll, I'll simply read it to myself or, or speak it aloud rather than sing it. I will sing it this morning. And um, just, it, it just is a reminder, it's a focus point for us to remind us to come back to the God who has created us, who has redeemed us, and in whose life we live, and whom we live and move and have our being. So I hope that you have the opportunity um, to set up something like this in your home, just a corner that reminds you to, to do what you know you ought to be doing, what we all know we ought to be doing. And that is uh, lifting our, our hands, lifting our eyes, lifting our hearts to God. So this morning I, I will, as usual, begin with uh, morning prayer in Psalm 95. O oh, Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth the heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Oh, come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory.
glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship Him. Again, this portion of Psalm 95 is traditional for morning prayer, and um, it's usually followed by a hymn or another psalm. And so uh, today I will be reading from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha! and gloat over me, turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, do not tarry. After the second psalm or, or the hymn, whatever you're, you're working with yourself, then what you're going to do is um, simply read a lesson from Scripture. Um, if you have a favorite devotional, like our daily bread or the upper room or whatever it is that you use, maybe you use uh, one that you've bought at a Christian bookstore or wherever. Um, usually there's a scripture passage followed by a reflection, and you can do those together. Um, today I'm going to be doing a scripture passage from Philippians, and then following it up with a reflection from what's called the Carmina Gadelica, and I'll explain that in a minute. But this is from the third chapter of Philippians. And Paul writes, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that if possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be thus minded. And if in anything you are otherwise minded, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So after you do the reading, usually in morning prayer, the reading and the reflection are a little bit separated. Um, of course, you can do whatever you want. Two minutes of prayer is better than no minutes of prayer, but it makes for a rather short broadcast. So I've made the decision to go ahead and uh, do a little a more full order of morning prayer that you would do for home use. In church, you can do a full hour-long morning prayer. There's lots of different ways to do it. Um, but Usually after the reading, you recite these words from the book of Hebrews. Uh, in many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. And those words from the book of Hebrews remind us that we are in the last days. There's a lot of people running around because of the political unrest, um, saying that the rapture is near or something like that. And, who knows, the end might be near, although Lutherans don't typically believe in the rapture. Um, but I would say this, uh, there have been people predicting that the end is near since the first generation of Christians. 
Uh, the truth is we are in the last days because we live on the other side of the resurrection of Jesus. That begins the new creation, and so we are in the last days of this old creation, however long these last days take. So that, that word from Hebrews reminds us of that daily, that whatever difficulties we experience here, they're passing away, and they not only will pass, but in the end, we'll not only be set free from them, but uh, through Christ be in a place and a time that is beyond pain and suffering. And that's a wonderful thing to remember daily, especially right before you go to work and are likely to have a not the best day ever, because that's what happens at work, and that's what happens in a fallen world. After that, then we recite the canticle. Now, the uh, canticle is just a small song from Scripture. Um, this one is, uh, this one, we've got a couple of different things mixed together here. But this is from the Gospel of Luke. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I just thought of something as I was ending uh, that, that section from Scripture, that uh, you see me make the sign of the cross from time to time, and uh, that's whenever I invoke Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is, um, that's actually mentally what you should be saying when you cross yourself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter whether you go left to right or right to left. Um, it's usually different in the eastern half of the church and the western half of the church, but it's reversed over time, so there's no great right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, what I would say is this, that um, it's not a Catholic thing to do, or an Orthodox thing to do, or even an Anglican thing to do. It's a Christian thing to do. Um, and especially Lutherans uh, have done that because uh, Christians from the beginning have tried to find ways to involve their body in prayer. Um, if you've ever been to a, a more contemporary worship service or a more uh, charismatic service, you'll see people raising their hands. Um, you've definitely seen people fold their hands like this. Lots of pictures have made that, uh, paintings have made that famous. Um, the earliest picture we have of Christians at prayer is their hands are out. You can't see that like this both of them out like this and um, that's a Christians have always sought to involve their bodies in prayer we've we uh, will go down on our knees we'll go down on our face um, this is just another way of involving your body in prayer because the body's important right because Jesus uh, in the person of Jesus the Word of God the second person of the Trinity took on a body and so our bodies are going to be involved in our salvation. That's why we proclaim the resurrection of the body. And so um, we make the sign of the cross uh, to involve our body in prayer. And we make it when we say the name of the Trinity. It's actually done in memory of your baptism. So as God claimed you in the waters of baptism, as we hear in 
Galatians and Peter and a bunch of other places in Scripture. Um, we remember that God has claimed us by doing this little bodily motion as we say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you've ever wondered why I do it, that's why. Um, never required of Christians, but it's a wonderful gift uh, that you can give yourself. Um, you may feel comfortable with it, you may not. There's nothing right with it, there's nothing wrong with it. The point of it is to involve the whole of yourself in prayer, body, mind, and spirit. So, um, some people don't feel comfortable doing it, that's okay. Uh, it, we have Christian freedom to engage in it or not engage in it. Then there's typically a prayer that is, is offered here. Um, it's, used, it's called the prayer of the day. It lasts for the whole week. You'll hear it on Sunday and it goes through the entire week ahead. And the reason for that is that um, the idea is that the whole church together will be praying the same prayer. Um, in addition to whatever other prayers you offer in your personal life. So, here's our prayer for the uh, 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty and eternal God, you know our problems and our weaknesses better than we ourselves. In your love and by your help, help us in our confusion and in spite of our weakness, make us firm in faith. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's been a lot of debate amongst Christians, uh, especially between different denominations, about whether pre-written prayers are okay, or whether it's most authentic to pray just from your heart, as we say, or, which means extemporaneously. Um, both, are both, both, both are helpful, and uh, I will say this that prayer from the heart is what is required. We are required to give of ourselves to God. Um, and we are instructed by Jesus in the prayer he taught us to ask God each day for our daily bread. So whatever is at the top of our mind is what we need to be speaking to God about. However, I will also say this. I find that my heart is rather small and rather constricted. And that prayers written by someone else, A, they allow me to pray uh, something for my brother or sister in Christ, something that was on their heart. And because the prayers in our prayer books are written by dozens, if not hundreds of different people, and they've been written, most of these have been written across time. They've sort of made the language more modern, but a lot of these are ancient, ancient prayers. Um, it helps me grow beyond the smallness of my myself. Uh, it helps my heart grow bigger, helps me see the world in a larger way, helps me bring into my prayers concerns I might not otherwise bring in. It also helps structure my faith um, because all the prayers in the prayer book have been sort of vetted for heresy, and which is just a, means picking and choosing or error. Um, and so instead of it being prayers I'm offering that are theologically not very good, and that's easy to do for all of us, um, it helps shape my faith in a way that I know is pleasing to God. Now, it's not the only prayer I'm going to pray, that prayer of the day. Um, there's other prayers we're going to, that you want to pray, and you want to pray from your heart. Um, but just like the Lord's Prayer reminds us of different ways to pray, so the same way, we're going to see that with, um, with the prayers that you see in prayer books and things like that. So I, I encourage the use of a prayer book along with praying whatever is at the top of your mind and in your heart. So... Let's do that now. And Lord, what's been in my heart so much recently is the unrest that is racking our culture. Um, I know social media has made it worse because we're all in an echo chamber. We're only hearing now what we agree with instead of being challenged by people we don't agree with. And that's not a good thing. But um, I've got friends on the left and the right, Lord. And uh, what scares me, honestly, is that the rhetoric seems to be the same on both sides. Both sides are convinced that the other is trying to set up a dictatorship. Um, there may be people uh, trying to set up a dictatorship who are so convinced that they're right, they're willing to silence others, and I don't actually doubt that that's happening in certain quarters, but I don't think that's the great majority of the people, Lord. Um, so I would pray that you would give us a heart to reach out to people we don't agree with, to have hard conversations, uh, to be open-minded and listen, because the key to being, the key to having influence in other people's lives is to allow ourselves to be influenced. 
we don't want to manipulate people, Lord. We want to engage in real discourse um, because we, we're humble. We know that however much we believe we have the answer, we have just as much chance of being in error as all the people in the past did and all the people on the other side of the issue do, whatever the issue is. So I pray for peace in our time. I pray for uh, the civil discourse that America chose a long time ago as a substitute for taking up arms and killing people we disagree with. I pray that that would continue um, and that we would learn to work uh, together across our differences um, even as we advocate for what we believe is true. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I want to pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. The longer this COVID crisis goes on, the more evident it is, even in our own faith community, of the strain that it's causing. And uh, the offense I know that it's causing uh, between people in our congregation, um, in the sense that some people are, are more tightly, they're more afraid, they're more, they're more attached to the, the mask thing. Um, they think it's prudent and wise to, to, to take every precaution. And there are others who feel like, uh, these precautions are ridiculous. They don't seem to be making a difference. I know a lot of that just depends on what news source we listen to. So, Lord, I pray for peace this day uh, in our congregations, in our communities, um, and that, especially as Christians, we would lead with charity for the people we don't agree with. Um, again, it's required from people who want to do, do more and people who want to do less. But help us bear our each other's burdens in this regard and always take into consideration the the needs or the feelings the perspectives of our brothers and sisters in Christ and come together whatever our differences to work together when the discussions are over and um, when we've made an agreement to stick to it so that we can uh, we're honoring one another Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and of course Lord I want to pray for those who are sick with COVID people whose diseases uh, other diseases are not getting the attention they need because of COVID. My, my dentist was only able to reopen because she convinced our state representative that it had been five months since people had an oral cancer screening, um, her patients, and she was right. These are other deadly things which are, are assault us, Lord, and we need the healing arts, the people you've gifted uh, to do your work of healing upon our bodies. So uh, I pray for all those who are ill uh, at this time and those who care for them. I pray for those who have secondary difficulties, for whom the isolation has been difficult and it has ratcheted up their anxiety or their depression, perhaps made their struggle with addiction more difficult. Uh, I pray for them this day, Lord, and uh, if there's people like that around us and we know them and who they are, help, help us who are not necessarily struggling from the isolation because we're introverts or whatever, help us to reach out and and take care of our brothers and sister humans and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And O oh Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power so that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord, like that thief who hung beside you on the cross, we ask that you remember us in your kingdom. And like your disciples, we ask that you teach us to pray. And we remember your teaching in the words you've given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I told you I was going to share with you something from the Carmina Gadelica. Um, there was a guy named Alexander Carmichael who collected the prayers and 
the singing of the Gaelic people in the outer isles of Scotland and the Highlands. And he put them together in this book called the Carmina Gedelica. Um, marvelous, marvelous collection of prayers and it. it represents that. You've heard so much about Celtic spirituality. Well, this is what, this shows it, this represents it. I love this, this book because um, although he was a scholar and certainly his language represents some of the scholarship of, of the 19th century, late 19th century, um, these are just simple prayers by simple people, farmers, fishermen. Um, they tend to be repetitious uh, and what's beautiful about that is they're just laying things out. Um, there's just gorgeous, gorgeous connections here. Um, this is a, a piece called Holy Father of Glory. Um, this is not one of the simpler ones, but this, it's just beautiful and I wanted to share it with you. It it's, probably was a song originally, so I offer this to you. Thanks be to thee, Holy Father of Glory. Father kind, ever-loving, ever-powerful. Because of all the abundance, favor, and deliverance that thou bestowest upon us in our need, whatever providence befalls us as thy children, in our portion, in our lot, in our path, give to us with it the rich gifts of thine hand and the joyous blessing of thy mouth. We are guilty and polluted, O God, in spirit, in heart, and in flesh, in thought, word, in act. We are hard in thy sight, in sin. Put thou forth to us the power of thy love. Be thou leaping over the mountains of our transgressions, and wash us in the true blood of conciliation, like the down of the mountains, like the lily of the lake. In the steep common path of our calling, be it easy or uneasy, be it bright or dark for us to follow, thine own perfect guidance be upon us. Be thou a shield to us from the wiles of the deceiver, from the arch destroyer with his arrows pursuing us, and in each secret thought our minds get to weave. Be thou thyself on our helm and at our sheet. Though dogs and thieves would reave us from the fold, be thou valiant, the shepherd of our glory near us. Whatever matter or cause or propensity that would bring us to grief or pains or wounds, or that thou wouldst bear witness against us at the last, on the other side of the great river of dark shadows, oh, do thou obscure it from our eyes and from our hearts drive it forever. Now to the Father who created each creature. Now to the Son who paid ransom for his people. Now to the Holy Spirit, comforter of might. Shield and sane us from every wound. Be about the beginning and end of our race. Be giving us to sing in glory, in peace, in rest, in reconciliation, where no tear shall be shed, where death comes no more, where no tear shall be shed, where death comes no more. Amazing, I hear something like that, and I know it would have originally been sung in Gaelic, and that's why it doesn't rhyme or do all the things that, that it would do if it was a real song. Um, Gaelic's a beautiful language for that kind of stuff. It has this sort of lilt and musicality to it. But to hear songs like this that were just folk songs makes me realize that we folk of the 21st century are a long, long way from being nearly as Christian as our much poorer brethren from two centuries ago were. I knew that because I, uh, I'm familiar with some of the uh, things that go on here in, uh, or went on here in the valley in, in Pennsylvania Dutch culture, but it's just a a reminder that I have a long way to go as a Christian living my day-to-day -day life to keep Christ in front of me all the time and to make every thought captive to Christ, as St. Paul said. If you wish, you could sing a hymn at this point, since I just read what were probably the words of a song. I'm going to not do that this morning, but I'm just going to end us with a prayer. 
Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 